teams on the floor tonight. How do you think it'll play out? Well, both teams want to run, so in that case, a lot of it comes to which team wants to run back on defense. You can't just outrun people one way. There's going to have to be a lot of intelligence and patience out on the floor tonight. Let's check out Minnesota's starting lineup. Conley and Ann are the one of the two. McDaniels and Towns make up the two forward spots. And it's Gobert in at the five, down low. Well, I love when guys like Edwards work inside. Don't settle for jumpers. Get a solid look close to the rim. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Nice start for him, sinking his first shot. Well, when you have a scorer as skilled as he is, you do everything you can to get him the looks he needs. And something that makes SGA so dangerous on offense, his elite drive and kick ability. Now you have to load towards him when he comes off a high pick. He just draws so much attention and can find another cutter or spot up shooter. He has so much gravity to his game. Here's McDaniels. Williams grabs the board. Gives us a chance to catch up with Ali LaForce. Mark Dagnall gave me a few minutes to catch up with him. He was emphatic, saying that Edwards was their main concern, telling me Anthony poses problems on both sides of the ball, and he is relentless. He doesn't let up. He wants his guys to match Edwards' energy. Okay, good stuff. Thank you, Allie. Pass to Gobert. Kicks it out, Towns. This one for three. Can't get it to go. Missed his first one. For Oklahoma City, they've gone one for three so far. To the middle. Stolen by Conley. Here's Edwards. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. It's going to be on Alex Caruso. Well, look, Edwards doesn't back down from anyone. He embraces getting physical on the way up. And stand while Edwards has pushed back. It hasn't stopped others from comparing him to his airness, Michael Jordan. And that talk is more about how his game reminds one of MJ and less about greatness. Edwards' career is just getting started. Dorn outside. Hardenstein a screen. To the paint. That's it fly. And that one goes. Feeding him with a lead pass. Well, all of us coaches... We love when you can create looks in close. Edwards finds Gobert. And here's Conley. Towns for three. Rejected by Holmgren. Here's Wallace. And the layup falls. Don't judge Holmgren by his size. He does have a passing skill set. Finding shooters and getting them the ball. Outside McDaniels. Holmgren against Towns. And it's blocked. Now here's Dort. Pass to Williams. Holmgren with a screen on McDaniels. Beyond the arc. Oh, he got it up in time, but it wouldn't fall for him. And still a close game as the first quarter comes to a close. And this has been a fairly close game through the first quarter. We'll see what happens here in the second. And for the Thunder guys. What jumps out to you stat-wise? Just excellent first quarter defense. They've been really getting after it. Yeah, but it's hard to keep that kind of intensity for the entire game. But if they can come close to that, they'll be in a great spot. Some serious height in the middle. Holmgren the four, Hartenstein the five. Shea Gilgis Alexander is out there with Kaysen Wallace. And it's Wiggins in at the three, the small forward. That's the lineup for Oklahoma City. This past offseason, OKC decided to move on from their former first-round pick, Josh Giddy. Yeah, the sixth overall pick in 2021. Giddy is a talented player with good upside, but fit is so important in the NBA. And the Thunder knew his talents would be better suited elsewhere. Terrific ball movement leading to the basket. You love to see it. Gilgis Alexander passes to Holmgren. 
Three-pointer off the mark. Timberwolves trail by four. They've been having major problems offensively. Definitely in a bit of a dry spell. Pass to Edwards. There's a minute 54 left in the first half. Six to shoot. Reed passes to Edwards. Fires the three. And it's Holmgren with a rebound. Yeah, you know, he usually makes you pay from that range. Wiggins finds Gilgis Alexander. Hartenstein a screen. Down low. And Hartenstein slams it in. Oh, not the defensive effort they need to cut into the lead. Well, good call. You have to at least try to protect the rim. Yeah, I'd consider calling timeout right away after that one. The defense has to be better there. Conley against Gilgis Alexander. Outside McDaniels. Pass to Towns. Over Williams. And no good trying to use the glass. And so it's Williams with it. He brings it up for the Oklahoma City Thunder. They've only given up two points this quarter. Oh, I love the ferocity on the drive. Williams doesn't lack confidence tearing towards the rim. Outside McDaniels. The fader. The Thunder pull it in. Now there's your rim protection. That's how you defend the post. Yeah, that's an outstanding defensive stand in close. Timberwolves trail by eight. Banked it in off the glass. McDaniels got his first points of the night. 32 seconds left in the second. Gilgis Alexander surveying the D. Shoots over Reed. And Gilgis Alexander missing. Well, he's more than comfortable in the mid-range, but you can't make them all. Caruso against Edwards. Pass to Conley. Let's go with a three. Pure from three-point range. Three point. Easy look when the defender isn't fighting over the screen. Yeah, it's certainly worth it to disrupt the offense. Coaches notice that extra. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that's been very close so far. Oklahoma City ahead, leading by three. Stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime to get the third quarter started. As we get into this third quarter, as we've seen so far, neither team able to create much separation on the scoreboard. Well, we have a chance to hear from Shams Charania. He's calling in right now. Shams, great to have you on, bud. Thanks. Many consider this summer to be the most challenging field in the history of international basketball. Nevertheless, Team USA got it done in Paris. It's not getting any easier, but the star power of the U.S. men's team shined bright in the City of Lights. Guys, a classic ending for a stacked U.S. roster. What a performance. Shams Charania with the report. Thanks, Shams. Kicking off the second half, here's Chris Finch's five. McDaniels and Towns make up the two forward spots. Conley and Ann are the one and the two. And it's Gobert in at the center position, filling out the middle. A chance here to catch up with Allie from the sideline. Ted Holmgren makes up for his light frame with aggression. He said, quote, you don't have to take a second look at me now to know that I'm not the biggest dude width-wise, so I have to hit first. Otherwise, the game's not going to go in my favor when things get physical, unquote. Brian, you agree? I do, and you can tell he just refuses to back down, Allie. Gobert with a screen on Gilgis Alexander. They get the rebound. Misses from close range. Oh, this is exactly the kind of opportunity you don't want to waste. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Town. Oh. 
And here in the second half of play, we're just over a minute in. Dort finds Gilgis Alexander. The floater. Yes! And the foul! It goes on Mike Conley. Gilgis Alexander is just that good. Finishing the play through the foul. Oklahoma City shooting their first free throw of the night here. Hardenstein, he's checked in for Oklahoma City. Alexander Walker, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. That free throw good from Gilgis Alexander. Yeah, what's special about Gilgis Alexander is how shifty he is, which also makes it so tough on defenses. And Chris Finch calls time out here. He wants to give him a breather and talk things over. Timberwolves trail by six. Many teams try to play two bigs in their lineup, but without success. Grant, what makes Minnesota different? You know, B.A., the fact that no matter who's in that rotation up front, one of the two bigs can stretch the floor. And then on the defensive side, they use their length to contest shots on the perimeter. Just a ferocious play by Edwards, taking the contact but staying committed to his finish. To the inside, here's Williams. Count it. When it's this close, every bucket matters. You need good looks. Edwards against Caruso. And here's Edwards. He's got five. Here's Gobert. Oh, and Gobert powers it home. Yeah, great play from Edwards off the pick and roll. Moving the ball around and get another guy a shot. Gilgis Alexander passes to Hartenstein. Williams from long range hits the trifecta. Williams has got five points now in the quarter. He's pouring it on at a nice clip, and the rest of the team is stuffing up as well. Edwards for three. That's in. Coming off an assist from Towns. I love how competitive Edwards is. He relishes getting revenge like this. Gilgis Alexander passes to Caruso. Just over two and a half minutes gone by in the second half. Oh, it's stolen by Towns. Fast break, Minnesota. Edwards driving. That shot missing. Good work defensively by Caruso. Inside, Holmgren. Nice assist and nice finish. Solid play all the way around. Holmgren's got five points. That's just a great pass. Excellent vision to see the open spot in the defense and lead him to the score. And Chris Finch calls time out here. He's going to talk it over with his guys. And Edwards puts up a deep three. No good. Would have counted had it gone. And so it's the Oklahoma City Thunder leading by six as we wrap up the quarter. Defense is setting the tone. Back to the game after this break. And it's been a very competitive game so far as we get rolling here in quarter number four. Timberwolves trail by six. Caruso and Williams make up the perimeter. Some serious height in the middle. Holmgren the four, Hartenstein the five. And it's Gilgis Alexander in at the point. That's the lineup out there for the Thunder. Pass to Caruso. Back to Gilgis Alexander. Oh, and Towns with the block. And look at that reach. I mean, Towns just saying no. Caruso against Edwards. Shoots over Caruso. Edwards can't hit. Oklahoma City leading by six. Caruso up top. Guarded by Edwards. Back to Caruso. Holmgren with a screen on Edwards. To the inside. And stolen by Gobert. Fast break, Minnesota. The finish! Oh, he powers right through the defender for the dunk. Draws the foul, too. And he'll go to the line. It's going to be on Alex Caruso. Throw good, Edwards. 
free throw shooting comes into focus in tight games. As usual, he's up to the task. That's to Holmgren. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. It's going to be on Carl Anthony Towns. And we talk about the things that made Chet Holmgren an elite prospect. Mental toughness is near the top of the list. And no good as the first free throw misses. We'll see if he can hit the second. And he does get the second one. And that gives him a four-point cushion. Yeah, many believe Holmgren must add muscle over time to his wire refrain. We'll see if he focuses on doing just that. Edwards against Caruso. To the middle. Here's Gobert. And Gobert with the stuff. Showing great vision in delivering the pass out in front. Here's Gibbs' Alexander. He hits the back iron and sinks it. Well, this is what he does. A proven scorer in the clutch. Edwards looking it over. Pass to Gobert. And the shot counts. He's fouled, and it's a chance for a three-point play. And the Thunder making a change here. Dort's checked in. is for Gobert. And Williams has got the ball here for OKC. The lead is two. Strong finish by Gilgis Alexander. Oh, obviously Gilgis Alexander has the will to win. What a relentless effort. Unforced turnovers. He'll drive your coach insane. And you got to be in awe of incredible defensive efforts like this. And this is exactly why he's out here, in order to block shots in tight games like this. There's a minute 12 left in the game. He gets the shot to fall, and the defender wasn't set. He's called for the block. A three-point opportunity here. A minute six left in the fourth quarter of this one. Edwards against Caruso. And they're going to count that bucket. And they'll send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. Thunder have gone three of four in the fourth and looking confident on offense. Outside, Williams. Caruso outside. Three-pointer. Towns with a rebound. This is do or die time. They must play flawlessly. Caruso against Edwards. Towns for three. Money. Oh! Sensational bucket. That brings it within one. Whoa, whoa. That is as clutch as it gets. Big time play. Yeah, don't you just love to see a player embrace that kind of pressure? No fear in the eyes of Gilgis Alexander. His guys believe in his ability to come up big. And Chris Finch calls time out here. And a great call on his part. This is the time you want to be in sync right here. What do you think is going to be their best move at this point? 
tricky situation here. They need some kind of bucket to stay alive. Yeah, the clock is their enemy, and they know it. We'll see if they go for the tie or try and get a quick one. 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Towns finds Edwards. Ooh, can't tie it up as that one's no good. And it didn't register as an official block, but he did everything you want in disrupting that shot. Well, you know, sometimes the most pivotal plays don't always go on the stat sheet. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. He gets the first, and that gives him a four-point cushion. Second one is good, getting both at the line, and it's a five-point game. Great work at the line under pressure. They're that much closer to putting this game away. Minnesota calls timeout. They trail by five. Given the situation here, what sort of strategy needs to be top of mind? Searching for a fast bucket, then a way to stretch things out. Yeah, and then they have to foul quickly and hope for some misses at the line. Here's Conley. McDaniels from long range. And connects from downtown. Easy look when the defender isn't fighting over the screen. Yeah, it's certainly worth it to disrupt the offense. The coaches notice that extra effort. Yeah, just a must-foul situation to stop the clock. Good on the first, and that makes it a three-point lead. And so both free throws good, and it's a four-point ball game. Great composure there. Calmly knocks them down to put this game out of reach. The shot by Towns, no good. And so the big win by Oklahoma City in a tight game. I'm sure they would have preferred a blowout victory, but a win's a win. And so true, but you have to credit the crowd for giving them such a big boost toward the end. They really kept this team's energy high. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. With Grant Hill, Stan Van Gundy, and Ali LaForce, this is Brian Anderson saying thanks for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. And now, time for our player of the game, Shea Gilgis-Alexander.